Discussing thermal conductivity. Uh, thermal conductivity, this is the passage of, of thermal energy through, through the material. Um, and we talk about it in terms of the flux of, of energy. Q, which is uh, thermal flux, which has units of joule per second meter squared, is equal to negative K dt by dx. So basically, the thermal flux is proportional to the temperature gradient. So if you have some, some wire, T hot, T cold, then you have, and this is the position along that wire, you have thermal energy being passed and we're counting the amount of energy to cross that area per second. So energy per meter squared per time. And with this constant, this, then the constant of proportionality, this is a temperature gradient And then that is the constant of proportionality, which is our thermal conductivity. <coughs> and then this should look very similar to our, our concept of, of flux. Uh, the concentration gradient for matter, for example, you know, some impurity species, and, and uh, then our uh, coefficient in that case was the diffusion coefficient. So the behavior, and this is Kelvin per uh, meter, which makes this joule per second meter Kelvin. So that, that makes this uh, very similar in, in behavior to Fick's first law. which you may remember being J is equal to negative D DC by DX. So this is a, a, an analogous uh, way of, of thinking. So as in the case of a fixed law, uh, you know, this is the measurement, this is the geometry, so the material science is being held in the diffusion coefficient, and here the, the material science is all in the thermal conductivity. So two modes for uh, thermal conductivity. Physical mechanisms. Uh, K are Thermal conductivity is in part uh, due to uh, electrons and in part due to lattice vibrations. Well, this as you can imagine, is really dominant in, in metals. <coughs> and uh, in fact, the thermal conductivity of metals is much higher than ceramics. And, and that's because uh, these electrons are extremely effective at transporting heat and at storing heat, uh, as, as we know from discussing the thermal uh, uh, capacity. Uh, these, 
and are in ceramics. And thinking about ceramics uh, a little more, uh, <coughs> greater in crystals. As, as compared to not so hot, so good in amorphous materials. Right? Glasses typically are not very good conductors. Uh, neither are polymers. Glass and polymer. are not great uh, conductors. Kind of an interesting thing is, is that in uh, materials that that uh, conduct heat well, uh, the electrons and uh, lattice vibrations are, are, are actually tied together, for example, in, in metals. Uh, and we have this thing called the Wiedemann-Franz law, which tells us that the thermal conductivity divided by the electrical conductivity times the temperature is a constant. <coughs> and, and it is. And it's equal to the, the Lorentz constant And, and what makes this kind of interesting is it means that uh, you can It's very difficult to make something which is a good electrical electrical conductor, but a poor thermal conductor uh, because of, of, of this uh, the electrons. And the place where this becomes important uh, is in the case of uh, thermoelectric materials. So thermoelectric materials is, is a class of material that's used to uh, extract waste heat from a process. And the efficiency is proportional to the electrical conductivity divided by the thermal conductivity, but because those two are tied together, uh, it's extremely difficult to, uh, to find good uh, good means to uh, to make thermal electric materials, and in fact, <coughs> we've been working on these for you know over fifty years, and have made only limited progress on uh, getting highly efficient thermoelectrics. Uh, typically, if you're working with a thermoelectric, uh, the game you play is uh, making a kind of okay electrical conductor, and then quenching the uh, thermal conductivity by uh, affecting the lattice vibrations. Uh, for example, there, there's a class of materials called a scutterundite, uh, and, and in which you have a, a lattice and in this lattice you have these uh, big atoms that sit in the center of the unit cells. Or I suppose it's every other cell. And uh, these big atoms have a heavy mass, and what happens is uh, they will tend to get into some local mode where they're just vibrating locally, and instead of passing the energy forward, uh, they're keeping the thermal energy local uh, while the electrons can move freely uh, around them. Uh, other games that people play uh, to control the thermal conductivity is using uh, super lattices. <clears throat> you can create a, a super lattice of uh, different material types. Basically, uh, uh, making a, 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 a series of uh, 
films that are grown on top of each other of different materials and uh, trying to find ways to space these to scatter phonons but allow electrons to uh, to pass but the phonons will be scattered or, or stopped in some fashion and, and people have done uh, considerable work uh, looking for methods to make super lattices that will act as uh, either a phonon scatterers or as uh, uh, rectifiers that you'll get uh, thermal conduction in one direction but but not in the other uh, this thermal conductivity and this this is a uh, talking about uh, single crystals uh, going to polycrystalline materials uh, depends on scattering Right? So just in the case here where I talked about scattering from uh, massive uh, atoms or from uh, lattices, uh, we can get scattering also from electrons, phonons, uh, grain boundaries. Uh, surfaces. defects, uh, each other, or I guess that's going to be uh, uh, phonons scattering off each other, um, and, and as a result, uh, this is also an area in which uh, nanomaterials become kind of interesting. So if you imagine a, 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 a you know, bulk material and there's, there's some, say, population of, of vacancies, well, you have some phonon and it will travel some distance and it will scatter and then it will scatter, scatter. So in the bulk, defect, important. In the nanoscale, if we can make a, say, a nanowire whose feature, for example, the diameter, is less than the mean free path between scattering events in bulk, what happens is you see a uh, scattering preferentially off of surfaces. So <coughs> uh, the thought of going from bulk to nano is also a means to have the thermal conductivity decrease in in, in a nanomaterial. And uh, uh, lastly, I, I just like to comment that uh, thermal conductivity, uh, there's still a lot of research to be done, even in the bulk. Um, and for example, we are zirconium diboride. Uh, zirconium diboride is, is a, a is a ultra high temperature uh, material, uh, you know, talking 3000 degrees uh, melting temperature. Uh, it's used in highly abrasive environments. It is used uh, as thermal barrier coatings. It is used uh, as grinding media. Uh, and it's also used in, uh, in nuclear reactors. Uh, as cladding material because uh, boron, uh, if you isotropically, is is isotopically uh, purify it, uh, there are isotopes of, of boron which are excellent neutron uh, absorbers. So 
Uh, this can be used uh, as, as cladding for nuclear fuels. Uh, interesting thing, the thermal conductivity as a function of temperature for uh, zirconium diboride typically looks like this. So this is a uh, 2000, this is, uh, say, 300. <coughs> You'll see a, a change, a decrease by around, uh, you know, it's going to go from, say, 100 to, say, 70 uh, watt per meter Kelvin. If, however, you take this and you put in ZR B2 plus 1% uh, tungsten, a very small amount of impurity, uh, you will see a thermal conductivity that now that looks like this. At low temperatures, it is around uh, 30 watt per meter Kelvin and at high temperatures, it's around 60. So that's, you know, basically uh, an order of magnitude change in the thermal conductivity due to a 1% addition of impurity. But kind of the big thing here is that not only do you get this large change, but you get a change in the, in the slopes. Here, as you increase the temperature of pure zirconium diboride, thermal conductivity goes down in the impurities as you increase the temperature, the conductivity goes up. Uh, and this is for a, a highly relevant uh, technological uh, material. Uh, this is still an open question, actually. This is a data that uh, collaborators of mine have from the University of Missouri Rolla, and, and we're trying to address this in a research project. Uh, we don't really have a good explanation for it, but it's a pretty fascinating uh, topic.